Hello, I'm a Tuba judge and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, on this broadcast, we give you truth. <laughs> now, first of all, I, I, I want to say exactly what God wants me to say and say the way he wants me to say it. Praise God. Now, that's the purpose for this broadcast. Now, that's why I always invite you. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do. Please do. And, and create time to go to our channel. We have lots and lots of videos. Lots and lots of messages. You can pick, watch, listen, get edified, learn, grow, and minister. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we call for that daily break before going to what the Spirit of God has dropped in my heart to share with you today? Join me in faith right now and declare, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So we're talking about the character of the person of love. John says, God is love. So we need to understand him. So we're reading 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We began from verse 4 and we stopped at verse 5. Where it says, the last part, it says, love thinks no evil. Thinks no evil. And I remember yesterday, I was talking to you about how God doesn't think evil. That's why there are certain things he doesn't know. He doesn't know. Does God know you're going to sin tomorrow? No, he doesn't. Does he know you have the tendencies for sin? Yes, he does. But are you going to fall for it? No, he doesn't know. See, how can you say he doesn't? He doesn't know. So you give him the benefit of doubt that you are a true child and say no. <laughs> He's giving you the grace to say no. But will you use the grace to say no? Does God know if you are going to prosper? His plan for you to prosper. But would you take the opportunities he's going to bring your way? That's in your in your pool. That's in, in in that's your call. That's your call. God will not say he will surely take it. He will pray and wish you take it because if you take it, it's going to be good for you. But even just at the last second, it's up to you to change your mind. That's the truth. Why? Because God doesn't think evil. And sometimes, even as parents, we raise our children thinking evil. We're training them, but in our hearts, we're thinking evil thoughts. We're thinking all the evil things that, that can happen, all the evil things that they can do. Sometimes, do your training, do your teaching, and then trust God. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah, that's the truth about life. Trust the Lord. Do what you're supposed to do. Because you need to show an example. You need to leave a mark. You need to leave signs of greatness for them. But then trust that they will do the right. Sometimes you talk to people and say, ah, now that one, hey, he will just, ah, I, I know what he will do. I know you are thinking evil. God doesn't. Hmm. Verse 6 says, Love, God, does not rejoice in iniquity. You know, he doesn't rejoice in iniquity. I think it was, was it Proverbs? I think Solomon said this. You know, he says, be careful how you rejoice when your enemy falls. And then he says, look, because God can see your rejoicing and have pity on the enemy. So, your oh God, deal with my enemy. Okay, like some people pray. And then you begin to see bad things happen to that person. Yes, God is dealing with him. Ah, oh, glory, praise God. And the Bible lets us know that God will look at you and say, ah, 
You see, because he doesn't rejoice in anything bad, even if it is his judgment. Don't think, you know, sometimes say, Father, you know, sometimes the things, the things Christians rejoice in, it's amazing. The kind of testimonies you hear sometimes, it's amazing. And sometimes I wonder why even pastors allow those kind of testimonies to be shared on their platform. Because it sends a very wrong uh, perception of the person of God. And I'll explain that to you. So someone comes and says, I have a testimony. So what's the testimony? Oh, I had this neighbor that was always troubling me. And... I mean, this neighbor has even pointed to me before and told me that, look, I will finish you. And I began to pray. I entered into dry fast. I began to do something that God, my, my God should fight for me. And I came to church last week. And when pastor declared that this week God will deal with your enemies, I knew, I knew he was speaking to me. Brethren, guess what? That my neighbor got accident the next day after church and died. He died. He did not survive the accident. Praise the Lord. And people will be clapping and say, yes, yes, yes. Brothers and sisters, those things get God angry. Don't think God. So he say, when everyone says, oh, praise God. You think God's like, yeah, that's me. Yeah, I did it for my son. Oh, yeah. No, sir. He never rejoices in evil. He never rejoices in iniquity. He never rejoices. Does God bring about judgment? Oh, sure he does. But he doesn't do it rejoicing. I have dealt with him. No. Now that's why when God looked at David and said, this guy is a man after my heart. There was a reason for that. Because now David had shown enough signs before God that he thinks and reasons just like him. That's what God meant, a man after my heart. A man who looks like my heart. Yeah, because he, he'd seen David do things. He'd seen David take certain action. You remember the story of David? Saul was looking for his life. No, I keep using this example. Saul was looking for his life. And Saul walked right into the cave where David and his men were hiding. And Saul was tired fell asleep. God is, was the one that caused a deep sleep to come on him and all his men. And one mentioned to David and said, look, the opportunity is here. Take the spare. Go trust him. Trust it through him. Your problem's over. You will become king just like God told you and everything's going to be fine. You know you'll rule well. Every of Israel will be happy. But David said, no, I won't. I won't. Now, like I keep saying, when David did that, I, I, I just perceived that God just said, huh? Now, not because God did that to make David to kill Saul. Oh, oh, king, I broke the shake at Ali Kabaya. Hmm. Now, understand when God is at work and when angels are at work. I, I pray every child of God will understand the ministry of angels. I keep praying to God to, to give me the leading, an opportunity one day to write a book on angels and the angelic ministry. There's a lot we don't know. So, the angels orchestrated that whole thing to happen. They were trying to help David. And God was watching. And David looked at the whole situation and he took a decision. And his decision pleased the Lord. He says, no, I will not kill. This guy, no matter what you think, he's anointed. And he's occupying an anointed position. I can go Sakina Hasia. So David says, no, if I do it, I'm going to get into trouble with God. Now that's how well David understood God. If I kill Saul, it will look like I've gained the victory. It will look like now everything is freed for me to become king. But you see this thing? is going to come up against me tomorrow. What kind of reason is that? What kind of reason is that? And, and, and so, 
Then I was like, nah, did David just do this? Oh, no, let's check him out again. Maybe, maybe he was in a too good mood that day. Let's try it again. The second time it happened, David said, no, I'm not going to do it. And God said, wow. Wow. You remember David? A man named Shimel was cursing him for no reason. Now, this is a guy that David had helped. But because David was running away from his son, and this guy felt God, judgment has come on David. And he began to curse him. Now, sometimes when people begin to talk, they begin to reveal the content of their hearts, even though they were with you before. You see this happening in human relationships. So this guy, you know, everybody felt this guy was with David. But suddenly he began to say some words that, oh, God has finally revenged the house of Saul on you. The things you did to Saul, your time of judgment has come. What? Now, while all that was going on, one of David's men got upset and said, look, allow me, let me deal with this fellow. And David says, no, 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 please don't. He says, look, my own son has chased me from the throne. That's enough for me. <laughs> Praise God. He says, hey, not this fellow. And David now said something. Now, you see, from the statements people make, you can tell how their mind works. Now, anytime I read that, I feel these chills. I'm like, wow, what kind of man was David true? So when God says he was a man after my heart, now you can understand. So David says, look, it may be that it is God that I've urged him, go curse David. So that as he's cursing me, God will hear him and have mercy on me. See, because David understood that God does not rejoice in iniquity. So even if I do wrong and I'm suffering the judgment of my wrong, and someone begins to rejoice over me. Now, that's enough for God to turn from the judgment. Are you seeing that? Now, that's why Jesus gave a clear instruction. He said, if your enemy is hungry, do what? Feed him. If he's naked, do what? Clothe him. Now, that's not what you want to do to your enemy. Ah! He's hungry. Ah, praise God. Can you say, the judgment is coming. Did you, did you hear that he didn't eat yesterday? <laughs> How will he eat? Ah, the things he did to me. Think God will not punish him. God is dealing with him. Hey, hey, that's not love walking. Now someone will say, eh, why, why, why should I love? Did you know what he did to me? Hey, your character. Because you see, what we're defining here, is the personality of God. It's not what God does to us. It's the personality of God first. Who so says, love, God does not rejoice in iniquity. He doesn't rejoice. Never will he rejoice. So see, I saw my enemy being dealt with and I heard, I heard the Spirit of God tell me, now my son, you can rejoice. I have dealt with your enemy. Brothers and sisters, I tell you the truth today. That wasn't the voice of God. That was a demon that spoke to you. Why? God, who is love, does not rejoice in iniquity. He doesn't. Praise God. Now watch this now. He says, but rejoices in the truth. Now, what's the difference between rejoicing in iniquity and not rejoicing in iniquity, but rejoicing in the truth? Now, there are times judgment brings out truth. I get what I'm saying. If, if, if maybe someone has claimed something that is not his, and then eventually events unfolded, and that thing is now taken away from the person that that stole it before and give it to the other person now you look at that one person is grieving right the other person is rejoicing now you on this other side what part are you going to play 
Are you going to join to laugh at the person that it was taken away from? Or, okay, this other person that got it now, how do I relate with him? Can you see? So, one is rejoicing in iniquity. Hey, finally, Paul, hey, you see, see your life, see your life is good. God has shown you. Now you are rejoicing in iniquity. How are you supposed to respond to that? Very simple. It's such an unfortunate situation. But to see, learn to do what is right so you don't face this kind of things. Now, the other fellow who gained what it is, truth has prevailed over the matter. Truth has happened to him. And then now you rejoice with that person because of the truth that has happened. Not because he has gotten something. I get what you don't celebrate what he has gotten. You celebrate the fact that truth has prevailed. Because see, if truth doesn't prevail, it sends a whole wrong signal, not just to us, but to the generations after us. Are you getting? So that's why sometimes it's it, you push for justice to prevail. You know, sometimes Christians do this play this attitude of eh, eh, leave it now. It's 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 God. It's God. It's important. You don't sit down and say, oh, it's God. It's God," and allow them chop off your head. You must ensure. So sometimes seeking for justice doesn't mean fighting someone. You need to understand these things. So now I'm bringing that up so you will understand where rejoicing in iniquity is completely different from rejoicing in truth. So love doesn't rejoice in iniquity. It doesn't, it doesn't jump that someone has failed. It doesn't, no, 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 no. But then it rejoices when truth has prevailed. And why he's rejoicing is because truth prevailed in that circumstance. Now, because truth gives hope. When truth prevails, it gives hope to everyone that, hey, truly, when, when I'm wronged, I can seek justice and I'll get it. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that's God for you. He never rejoices in iniquity, but he rejoices in truth. Mm, mm, mm. It says, Love bears all things, it carries. All th I can't take that again. L listen, I have taken enough of your nonsense. I can't take it again. It's not love that is working, brothers and sisters. Love has the ability. Now, when it says love bears all things, love, God has the ability to bear all things. It's an ability. It bears all things. Imagine God telling you that he can't take it again. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, he can't take it. <laughs> it's God. Oh yeah, he can take it. He can take anything. Anything. He can take it. You can't change God. But he has the ability to bear all things. And next one says, Love believes all things. Now, wait, wait, now, I remember one time I was meditating on this because you know, because that's what I do. I, I take time. Things, something like it's very important. Very, very important. And you can take weeks and weeks just meditating on this few verses. Each line, hours meditating on it. So when it says love, believe all things. How do you define all things? So love, just believe anything. Come and lie to love. Love will believe I was meditating on this and I, I was asking the Lord, I said, Lord, now this is a difficult one. Love believes all things. So I'm supposed to be walking because that's how I was reasoning the word. Now, everything I see here is supposed to shape in my character to walk in this truth and in this light. So I say, love believes all things. So meaning, if love is perfected in me, I will believe all things. And then the Lord said something very striking to me, and I want you to learn from it. He said, when you begin to live a life of suspicion and trying to prove someone wrong, you know what I mean by that? 
and someone comes and says, I know this person's lying and I'm going to find out. He said, when you begin to live like that, then trust me, your life is going to go south eventually. He said, how do you mean? And then he said, I said, but, but then truly people come to lie to you. He said, he said something. <laughs> Haven't I said a lying tongue never lasts? I said, yeah, but I don't want to be a victim to a liar. He said, listen, allow me to prove all things and I will surely prove all things. So I found out that everything has to do with trust. Trust who? Him. Then I began to practice this. And then I began to practice this. I said, okay, you know what? Face value, I'll believe everything. Now, believing everything, your mind, you have to start worrying with your mind. So someone comes and tells you, and says, and, and he, now when I began to practice this, he now taught me something. Where it comes to, you know, everything. He said, Never make a commitment until you confirm from me. I said, okay. Now, I wouldn't have known that part if I had not first started walking in this street. So I should believe everything. He said, yeah, don't go suspecting people when they are talking to you. I said, okay, sir. Okay. So someone comes to me and, sir, you know, two days ago, my house got burnt. And everything inside got burned. He said, oh, really? He said, yeah. Mm. In fact, after that fire, the next morning, as I was trying to go and gather my things that I left in my friend's house, at least let me start life from there. I got to his house and realized I'm robbers have carried them. He said, ah, really? Yeah, yes, sir. In fact, he starts giving you all those stories like, oh, wow. So please, I, I need help. Oh, really? Okay, no problem. Let me see what I'll, I'll do about it. Then I go before the Lord. I say, Lord, so what do I do? Where do I get money from to give to this person? And the Lord says, don't give him any money. Oh, really? But he says, don't give me money. Thank you, sir. All right. Now, like, um, sorry. I don't think I can help you right now. I really would have loved to, but uh, I, I really can't do anything about it. Hey, but, but, but it's not fair. You know, you're a pastor even. Yeah, yeah it's okay. And then, Two days later, some events unfold and you realize the person was lying. <laughs> now you see, you were protected, but you still walked in love. Now that's what the Holy Spirit does in our lives and our time is up. Praise God. Are you getting blessed with this? Listen, the security we have is the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Father, I pray for everyone watching right now. That they come into a real walk with you. And truly begin to learn how to depend completely on you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a blessed day. Bye.